Hello everyone and welcome back to Jimmy Talks Jira. This was not my original plan for this week, but the Atlassian University team has a promotion going on which will end shortly, so I wanted to get this out sooner rather than later. This week we're going to be going through a how to prepare for the Confluence Space Administrator Pro Badge exam. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so I am going to be posting this as an article on the Atlassian community. You'll be able to find it in the training and certification collection, um, which is going to have a text version of this walkthrough with links to a bunch of the various things that uh, we're going to be talking about in this video. Uh, so first off, who is this for? Um, if you are watching this video, likely you are interested in acquiring the Confluence Space Administrator Pro Badge. Uh, whether you're doing it because you want to get to the Atlassian Certified Expert Standing or you actually use Confluence on a regular basis and you want to take that next step and, you know, um, validate that you know what you're talking about when you are a Confluence Space Administrator. The university team uh, recommends having at least six months to a year's worth of experience uh, administering spaces in Confluence before you start uh, preparing for this exam. I can tell you that personally, I only had about one month's experience, but I have been an Atlassian admin for close to 10 years, and I have taken six other certification exams before I attempted this one. Uh, sorry, not just taken six exams, I have passed six other certification exams before I attempted this one. So I was familiar with how Atlassian's going to write the exams and the types of questions that they're going to ask from a uh, knowledge uh, perspective as opposed to a content perspective so I felt prepared enough to know the types of things that I'm going to need to study um, so it was one of those things where I just needed to study content uh, being more familiar with how Atlassian was going to present the exam to me that being said um, it was definitely a challenge for me and while I did pass, I barely squeaked by myself, so do not underestimate this. Um, even if you have been a Confluence Space Administrator for some time, it is a challenging exam. Not to say that it's tricking you or it's uh, impossible, but it is going to challenge uh, the level of knowledge you have and your best practices. So, where should you start with this? Uh, my first recommendation is go to university.atlassian.com and the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, under this topics uh, we're going to go to badges and certifications. Uh, you want to go to pro skill badges and we're going to go to the page for the Confluence Space Administrator Pro Badge which was the page I was on when we first got here. This has a great aggregation of all the links that you were going to need to get to the various other things as we are talking about things going through here. So um, where should you start once you get to that page? Um, I would start by looking at the exam topics. Um, so you can see sort of the exam details here. I will go back and touch on those in a second, but uh, the exam topics is where I would look at first. And when you open up that PDF, you can see what's going to be tested on this as well as how much uh, percentage-wise it's worth on the exam itself. Um, so as you can see, access and permissions is going to be the bulk of what you need to know. So if you are super comfortable with that, and you are super comfortable with, say, content management, which is worth about the same amount, you are comfortable with 80% of the content that's going to be covered in this exam. If that makes you comfortable enough to say, yep, I'm ready to write this, Let's follow through some of the other things, um, but you might be in a good position to start. If you are uneasy about those things, you might want to spend a bit more time getting familiar with Confluence from a space administration perspective and just getting yourself ready to uh, start reviewing things uh, before you dive in and try and write the exam. So taking one step back, um, the one thing I did want to point out is the exam itself. Um, it is a proctored exam, which means you need to either go to a certified testing center and the Atlassian certification portal will have all the information on where the closest testing center is to you. 
or you can use PSI, which is their online proctored uh, testing facility. And basically a proctored exam is where someone will be watching you either at the testing facility or through webcam for the entire time that you are writing the exam, just to make sure that you're not cheating while you're doing it. Um, if you're going to go the online approach, and I will have links to all of this, I highly recommend reading uh, this certification exams through PSI uh, that Fabian Lim wrote. It is a fantastic, comprehensive look at everything that you need to know to be prepared for writing an online exam. Because there are a lot of uh, things that you need in your house or your apartment that are uh, set up in a way that uh, will allow you to be successful in writing that. Um, as always, links to all of this stuff will be in the description. It is also going to be in the article that uh, I will have on the online community. So now that you have figured out that you are, you think you're ready to write the exam and you have gone through, made sure that you have everything set up to be able to write the exam, how much time do you need to study? So as I had mentioned, um, you know, the exam topic list is a good starting place. Um, if you feel comfortable with that, you might not need as much study time as someone who looks at this and is uh, a little scared of or intimidated of the content. My personal recommendation is I would immediately go to the sample questions and the sample questions are available on the uh, certification page in the Lassian University uh, site. And these sample questions will just give you, I like to think of it as a good benchmark to know whether you are confident enough with the content and the way that Lassian is going to ask the questions um, to see if you're ready to start writing or not. If you get 100% on your first try uh, through these sample questions, you probably don't need as much time to prepare because you're in a good state to schedule your exam, do a bit of review, and start writing it. If, like me, you bombed this your first time, probably you need to look at what you did wrong. Um, the sample questions will do a good job of explaining why a certain answer was wrong versus the answer that's right and start reviewing those specific pieces um, to help yourself prepare for actually writing the exam. So we have now talked about the how much time do you need. I would say you'll need however much time it takes you to review the content that you are not as familiar with. Um, and the amount of time it will take you to be ready to write the exam will depend on how much time you have to devote to write it, uh, to studying uh, ahead of writing the exam. So I was able to put aside two-ish hours every single night for two weeks, and I made it a, a concentrated effort to study every single night for about two hours, and I felt ready to write the exam at the end of that. Um, so however much time you have, that's going to determine when you should be thinking about scheduling your exam. So, we now have talked about how much time you need and whether you think you're ready to write the exam. What do you do next? Um, for me, um, I personally will procrastinate forever if I don't have a deadline. So, once I've figured out how much time I think I need to study, I will actually schedule the exam right then and there. Um, and this is that point where I make sure, read through the PSI um, article that Fabian wrote because you'll want to make sure that you have your environment set up to go before you actually pay for the exam. Because if you find out that, you know, you don't have a working webcam, as uh, for instance, um, that will prevent you from actually being able to write the exam and you don't want to waste your money on that. Um, so I would personally schedule my exam at this point. As I mentioned, I had about two hours per night, so I thought I needed about two weeks. I scheduled my exam two weeks in advance. And then... What I did after that is I studied every single night leading up to the exam, and I tried to get myself to a point of being able to mentally recall information that was going to be tested on the exam without having to look it up, go to Google, um, or anything like that, uh, so that mentally it was all in my head. Now, my head was very full when I was going to write the exam, but it's one of those things where I think if you can mentally recall things uh, without assistance, you're going to do quite well on the exam. So 
how do you start studying? Um, this is going to be all my personal opinion of how I prepared for it. Not everyone is going to do things the same way that I did, but I thought I would share my experiences and you can tailor this to your own needs uh, however you like. Um, the first thing that I did is I took a look at the two free skill builder courses, um, which were configuring and troubleshooting permissions, as that covers permissions, which was definitely one of the pieces. And then using Confluence as a documentation knowledge base, which covers some of the content uh, pieces. If you remember, both of those were sort of weighted the, the most within the exam, so I figured those are two very good starting points as far as reviewing things. So, you know, those links will take you through to these courses. They are both free courses to take. Um, they don't take overly long to complete. As you can see, this says about 1.2 hours for the uh, configuring or configuring and troubleshooting permissions, and then about an hour for the documentation as a knowledge base. Um, the other thing that is now available um, as an option to you uh, is the Confluence Administration course. And now this is a paid course, and this is brand new. Um, it hasn't been out for very long. Um, it will take you about seven hours to complete this full course. I personally have not taken this course. Um, as I said, it wasn't available when I wrote this exam. But the one thing I wanted to share with you, and the reason I'm doing this video today, um, is that until the end of April, so if you register for that course before May 1st, and if you use the code APRIL-50 at checkout, you will get 50% off of the price of that course. Uh, now that course is $400 normally, it is currently $200 US. So if you feel like this course might help you prepare, um, which if you look at the topic list, um, you know, cloud and data center, it's gonna cover access permissions, global configuration settings, understanding global permissions, administering spaces, managing content, and then ongoing confluence management. A number of those sections are going to be very beneficial for you as far as um, covering the exam topic lists. Uh, it might be worth going through this course um, instead of doing the other option, which is what I did next. And that is going through the documentation. So if you uh, look at the exam topic list, you can see things like configuring appropriate use of permissions. And if we go and take a look at, uh, now I'm using the cloud documentation here, you can very easily switch over to data center and server. Um, but you know, as we start looking through here, we can very easily expand some of these columns and we can find uh, the various things that we are looking for as far as uh, the categories that are going to be covered on here. Um, so, you know, learning about Confluence Cloud permissions, that definitely will help you cover um, that particular topic. The one I wanted to specifically call out was that there is an actual page on the functional differences between Confluence Cloud and Server. And you'll notice that that is only one to 5% of the exam, but there is an actual full page on that. So the documentation absolutely will help you um, in being able to help prepare for the exam. Moving on to the very last piece that is also new, um, at Team 22, the Atlassian University did a certification Jeopardy, and they turned that into a flashcard Trello board. There is one specifically on Confluence macros, which will, you know, uh, list a card that has a description of something, um, and then allows you to uh, learn more about it uh, within each card. And this is probably also just another minor piece that can help you as far as being able to prepare for writing the exam. So, uh, in summary, my recommendations are to take the sample questions to start with, give yourself a baseline of where you think you're at, go through the exam topic lists, and make sure that you're comfortable with the topics that are going to be covered and the weight that they are assigned on the exam. Take the free uh, skill builder courses. Um, if you feel like you could use the Confluence Administration paid course, 
absolutely sign up for and take that one as well. Go through the Confluence documentation. Um, and, you know, once you feel as though you are comfortable and ready, schedule your exam. And good luck. And, you know, I hope you uh, do very well and pass the exam on your first attempt. I hope you found this video informative. Be sure to take advantage of the Atlassian University discount if this is something that you are interested in. That does expire May 1st, uh, so you'll want to try and get in there as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like. Please let me know if you'd like me to cover other certification preparations in the future. I'd be happy to go through some of the other exams as well. Um, and consider subscribing to the channel uh, for notifications on future content that I do. As always, thank you for stopping by.